White flag coming out as Corky Stockham tries to figure out how much it's going to cost him next week. He says, I'm not even going to show up. You kidding? Corky Stockham, the National Parks President of the Racers Auction and Trade Show. The weekend before Thanksgiving at the Center of Progress building at the New York State Fairgrounds in Syracuse. Push truck into the, not the push truck, the pace truck into the rear pit gate entrance. Greg Furlow and Bobby Goodemont picking up the pace now. Coming down on a turn number four, a green flag from Jerry Kritzman. Down the front shoot, Danny Sewell trying to drive down low as Goodemont and Furlow dice side by side and Goodemont comes away with the lead. Pulling into the pits uh, right away was the 35 of Dave Tritek. He didn't even finish a lap. A couple other cars going to be pulling in as well. Bobby Bond came in on the back straight. behind him running side by side down into the third corner. 09 uh, and 33 going to be pulling into the pits. Here come your leaders down the front. Shoot Bobby Kermit. As your leaders continue to set a fairly slow pace to drop on the outside. The current high point man, Mike Muldoon, riding back there behind him as well. Bellinger and Sewell going side by side between the turns. They had a pretty good race in the uh, heat race as well. Dives around Sewell, trying to get underneath, but Boyceford and had to back out in a hurry, so Pellinger now moves up into the number seven spot behind the rookie Doug Boyceford. Three cars going into the pitch, the 89 of Todd Sewell, the 33 of Jennifer Chesler, and the 09 of Harry Thor. Now here's Mike Muldoon up alongside Pellinger down the back straight. That's a battle for seven. And Muldoon comes away with it in the number 35. Meanwhile, here's Jeff West. Up on the outside of the 93 of Bobby Goodemont, and West takes the lead. West now, the new leader of the 01. Goodemont running in second. Furlong is third. Timmy Garou wants for it. As your leaders, down the back shoot, dicing in the top five, the zero of Timmy Snyder. Then a battle going on for six between Boisford and Wilson. Douglas running up in 10th, 17-7, the time on that last lap for Jeff West in the 01. Westing down across the spot, the second down, 38 remaining here in the run super, there's 45 laps in the run, five feature of it. Here's Bellinger trying to get underneath Doug Boisford. He gets him down into turn number three. Bellinger looks underneath Boisford, sits in behind the zero of Timmy Snyder, trying to get into the top five. Mike Muldoon, 6th is the 0, Timmy Snyder, 7th, 02, 80, Bellinger, 8th is the 42, Benny Sewell, running in 9, and down, 23 to Mike Douglas, and Doug Boisford, who slipped up between 1 and 2 on that last lap, fell all the way back to 10th, right in front of Hal Tulip and Bobby Smith. Passing flag is out now for the 15 of Scott Elmer, and the 55 of Ryan and Bobby Presley. Hit behind the slower cars. He goes to the outside and Clark. There are two lap cars staying down to the inside of the track as the leaders flow by him on the outside. Scott Elbert goes to the lap down now and goes around and here's Billy Bill, Mike Furlong and Mike Mulhoon all going around the two slower cars. Bellinger now has moved up into the number six spot down the lap. Bellinger running in sixth in the 0-2 and also making a move around the outside now. Boyceford is 10th, and a battle going on for 11th. Hal Latula passed the spot just to have They go three wide down the back straight, and Roger Clark almost dived down low and took out the car ahead of him. That is the last minute. Your race the other one is just last down into the field. He's got Bobby Cook on right now, and he's going deck the five and coming to the back there in third. Then it's Furlong and Muldoon with Bellinger closing down. They're in the top six as Jack Carr makes a slingshot move down here in the corner. for tonight, and taking Jeff West, the race leader, heads down into the 
into turn number three. Westy out in front in that 0-1, sponsored by Olsen's and Impunnel Lodge. Down the front, shoot into the first corner. Put on running in second. 15 down, 30 into the third out. Shots the wheel underneath West, can't quite do it. Now he's got a wheel down in, going into the third corner. Westy hangs on to the spot. Timmy Guru hangs back there in third. Great full on Mike Muldoon and Eddie Miller. Basically nose to tail down the front, shoot. The front six cars, it's anybody's race. 16 laps are in. They are coming up on a pack of two slower cars, maybe three, running 1777 on that last lap. Their leaders now coming down the front chute, off the fourth corner, Jeff West, two of the slower cars ahead of him, running side by side, the 08 of Gary Sewell, and the 15 of Scott Elwood. Here's Kuttermout now. Kuttermout with the wheel down to the inside, tries to duck the inside, the 15 of Elwood going into the third corner. He's got to back out. That bottle's up the low road, and they come together now. They come together off the corner. The 15 of Scott Eldred. The 08 of Gary Sorrell. Good amount trying to get underneath. Gary Sorrell, that's a mandatory pit stop for the number one. He got to stop and go penalty for changing a tire. He's into the pits. Down to the track is Norris McDonald. We'll go to Norris. Hey, Roy, uh, Gary Sorrell has uh, indicated to the track safety crew that he's a okay. He's uh, unbuckling his harness and going to exit the... Please for the next five. And three more cars on the lead lap. Four more. The 11 of Bobby Smith, 56, Hal Latulip, Deuce of Joe Hawksby, and the one of Howie Page down into the third corner. Green flag from Jerry Kritzman. They come off that fourth turn. Your leader, the 0-1 of Jeff West. They string out, stand just in the same order. And now here comes Tony Maru looking to get on the lead line. He's Bobby Good around. He couldn't quite do it. Westy out in front, and Howie Page. Presses wheels down here with a 06 of Jack Carr. Page trying to make a run to get underneath Carr. They just barely touched. How he tried to get out of the uh, hole he was in. Got on the bottom. Pace truck down low into the rear picket entrance. Westy on it in a rush. Down into the third turn. The green flag comes out. Your leader coming off the fourth corner now. Down the front, shoot, look at Muldoon, trying to get on an 874 with Perlon. Looks quite good. Craig stands down to the inside, here comes the five, looking underneath the 93. Good amount running second in the 93, Timmy Garou third in the five. Now Muldoon going to the outside, can't make it stick out there either, comes back down to the inside, tries a slingshot out of turn four. 18-1-11 for your race leader. flat, Jeff West out in front. Craig Perlon trying to hold on Mike Muldoon, Muldoon now. Working him inside, outside, back to the outside between three and four. Furlong stays on it, coming out of the corner. Muldoon tries the slingshot. Bellinger had a little trouble. Danny Sewell got tired. Bellinger had a back out. He saw what was setting up between Furlong and Muldoon. Didn't want to get a nose in there. He backed out. Sewell roared around him, so Bellinger drops his spot. Oh, on Jeff West out in front. Down the front shoot. Mike Muldoon fifth, Danny Sewell is sixth, Bellinger runs in seventh. As your leader comes off the fourth corner down the front straight, building up the middle of the lane, running in the end with his Snyder. Mike Douglas and Doug Boyce have run out the top ten, Bobby Smith is eleventh. The 56, Hal Latour, twelfth, the Lucy Joe Hawksby, thirteenth, the one of Howie Page, fourteenth, they are all on the lead lap. Your leader coming down across the street. The first again on a couple of the slower cars. Meanwhile, West and Garou have pulled away from the field. And Garou takes the highway side along with Jeff West. Garou working the close of the one Meanwhile, 93, put him out, holding off Furlong, who is holding off Baldwin, who is holding off Sewell. Bellinger just a little bit off the pace at the moment. Passing flag coming out for the 15 to Scott Elder in the 55 of Ryan Clark. Jeff West moving to the mountain. Lap number 24, running in 25. Here's Muldoon up to the outside.
inside of Furlong, Furlong looks down from the inside of Kudera. They dice down into the third turn, one car going into the pit area back there. I think that was the 55 of Roger Clark who got the black flag. Your leader's now going by Scott Elbert. Here comes Kudera and, Mul and Furlong side by side between one and two. They touch down the back street, they straighten it out. Got a slower car ahead, Furlong shoots down into that third turn. He takes over third now from Bobby Kudera. Jeff West, 17, 62, and here's Carew now. He gets a wheel underneath. Wrestling Carew will be Furlong by two and a quarter seconds. Timmy Carew, 15 of Scott Elbert in the pitch. Timmy Carew working on the 0-1 of Jeff West. Westy now puts the hammer down. 17, 437. He felt the heat. He pulled away as Furlong runs third. Now Muldoon gets by to take over fourth. Good around running fifth. Is in sixth and Bellinger seventh. The rest of the top ten remain in exactly the same order they were in before. Timmy Snyder, Mike Douglas, and Doug Boyce from the nine order. Your leaders now down the back, shoot 17 37. As your lead is now four tenths of a second, and five car lengths for the 01 of Jeff West. And he is moving quickly in now on some of the slower cars. Now with Payne, now with Cooper, and Joe Hawksby, West of the straightaway. It's West out in front, the rule running second. They're both one-time feature winners here at Oswego. Frank Furlong running in third. Mike Muldoon is fourth, and Muldoon now backed out of it just a little bit. He's running in fourth, 93. Bob Muldoon runs fifth. As Muldoon running in the position he has finished both races in so far this year. Muldoon has two fourth place finishes and he's running in fourth right now. Jeff West, 17, 369 in the last half to make a rule right there with him. Running in third, Greg Furlong, fourth is Mike Muldoon, fifth is Bob Kudera, sixth is Danny Sewell, seventh is Eddie Bellinger. And now Bobby Smith starting to uh, make a run to get up near the front of the pack. Next in line, and then Doug Boisford. They are in the line. Smitty has taken over 10th. Boisford drops to 11th. Joe Hawksby Jr. running 12th. And your leader now, Carew gets by him as they get hung up in slow traffic. Carew got by the double run of Jeff West. Timmy Carew, the new leader, in the number five. With just 12 laps remaining, they go off the corner, 11 left. Carew on the outside, going by high. The 0-1 and Jeff West. Furlong still third. Well done in fourth. Then it's good about Sewell and Bellinger. Fifth, sixth, and seventh. They are nose to fail. Danny Sewell looking to get underneath Bobby Goodman. Can't quite find a way down there. Here's the race leader, Timmy Garou, in the number five. 17, five, five on that lap. Garou out in front. West running second. A great run for Greg Furlong in third. He has held on White Muldoon for about 20 laps now. Now here comes Muldoon trying to use the lap car, can't quite do it. Swings back out behind Furlong as they come around. Harry Page, 36 laps down, nine remaining. Put about Sewell and Bellinger next in line. They one nose to tail Danny Sewell again. Looking down to the inside. Here comes Westy now, back on the five of Timmy Garou. Garou hanging on, but Westy making a run at him. Garou down low, West to the outside, down the back shoot. West trying to make a move on the five of Timmy Garou. He can't quite do it. They come between three and four now. Here's Jeff West again on the outside. Passing flag showing for Joe Hawksby. West had a back out coming out of the fourth corner. Garou is out in front, 17, 5, 29. Jeff West now. Guard nine hit. One as well that time between one and two. He sets in second. Greg Furlong is third. Muldoon is fourth. As your leader comes around now, there are six laps to go. 17, 5, 18 for Timmy Garou. Jeff West in second. Furlong will do third and fourth. Here's Danny Sewell now. He's got a wheel underneath Bob Kudrow. over the number five spot. And Bellinger slides through it and takes over six. So Bobby Kudrow, a great run. And all of a sudden, he loses a couple of spots. Falls out of the top five right here at the end. Five laps remaining. Westy having a problem with the number 40. I don't know if it's serious enough to let Furlong and Muldoon catch him or not. Furlong, four laps to go now. Westy not as fast as he was. He made a move at Garou and then he ran the car out in doing it. He's now having problems between the turns. 
17501 for Kenny Garou. He's got three slower cars ahead of him right now. Deuce of Joe Hawksby, three laps to go. Ovon Jeff West running second, the 72. Greg Furlong is third, the 50, or 35, rather, Mike Mobile runs fourth. Here comes your leader up on the slow cars. Smith, Hawksby, and Boyster right ahead of your race leader, Timmy Garou. And Garou now leads Jeff West by just one second. So Westy has gone from a minute car lane behind to a full second behind. Now here comes the room with the four cars. The white flag is out. Doug Boisford looks over his shoulder, sees the faster car behind. And there's Joe Hawksby out of the fast lane and slows Garou down. Jeff West trying to move in on him. They're coming down for the checkered flag. Westy up to the outside. It's about five cars wide down the front chute. Timmy Garou takes the win. Jeff West is second, Craig Furlong third, Mike Mobile fourth, Danny Sewell fifth, Danny Bellinger sixth, Bob Cordon seventh, Mike Douglas is eighth, Timmy Snyder ninth, tenth is Hal LaTulip, I believe. LaTulip gets up for tenth, the last car on the lead lap. What a great race. Almost got decided again by lap cars at the end. Two lap cars trying to run in uh, side by side. They had the passing flag for several laps. And they were still running side by side with the leaders coming up to decide the race. But Jeff West with a car that was going away on him could not gather up enough speed to make a run at the eventual race winner of Timmy Garoup. So Westy, although he got right up on his bumper, could not make the run at the end to make the pass. And here he comes down in victory lane, his second career victory here at the Oswego Speedway. How about a nice hand for Timmy Garou? Third different winner in three weeks. And this year's Super Modified Up and Comer Award is sponsored by Cellular One. Go wireless with the experts at Cellular One. And now you'll get a free phone, free activation, and free unlimited locals calling until Labor Day. Cellular One has posted a $100 bonus for the driver that uh, has finished the highest that has never won a super modified feature here at the Oswego Speedway. Tonight, cell one. Up and comer recipient is Greg Furlong, driver of the number 72. And we got problems up in turn number three. It's not the 4th of July as the sparks begin to fly up there. Norris McDonald getting ready to go down into victory lane. There's Timmy Garou, a happy young man out of the car, and it's still burning. <laughs> Whatever's going on in the transformer in the third turn, it is still happening. In fact, safety crew going over to probably send somebody up the pole to hit it with a fire extinguisher. Yeah, it is, it is, it is burning, <laughs> no question about that. In fact, safety crew going over, but they're not gonna, whoops, there we go. It was bound to happen as we've had two transformer problems tonight. One happened when Bill Perry hit the wall in turn one, and now this one in turn three. Right now, we're going to go down trackside. Norris McDonald standing by with the race winner. Let's go down to Norris. Thank you very much, Roy. I'm standing here in victory lane, of course. The uh, photographers are quite anxious at the moment to take all the uh, obligatory pictures for the sponsors and the rest of it because of uh, the little problem that we seem to be experiencing with the uh, lights here. Of course, if they all go out, the uh, photographers are gonna have a heck of a time uh, focusing, never mind uh, getting the picture. And so right now, Timmy has uh, got the big grin on. And uh, as uh, you heard, as he crossed the start finish line, a popular victory. I tell you, two weeks in a row, it's been absolutely terrific with Eddie Bellinger last week and now young Timmy Garou this week. And uh, everybody's uh, very excited down here. As I say, the photographers are trying to get everybody in here to make sure that all the lights, uh, if they all do in fact all go out, that everybody is gonna have the souvenir pictures and uh, everybody's got a big grin on their face, right? And as I say, Timmy Garou's had a grin on his face since he got out of the cockpit. And of course, this is, uh, the first time he's been back in victory lane since that very popular 10,000 to win 
Mr. Supermodified last year. Okay, we're going to get in and give him a talk now. Timmy, congratulations. Attaboy. How does it feel to be back in Victory Lane here at the Oswego Speedway? It always feels good to be back in back Victory Lane. <laughs> For sure. Now, the big move, Timmy, came on lap 33. You came up in some lap traffic. Do you think you surprised Jeff West with that bold inside move? You dove right down inside him. Well, yeah, I think I kind of surprised a couple guys because I was diving down low on a couple of them, and I'll tell you, those lap cars have really uh, hurt me a few times, and they were, they were in my favor tonight. You know, that's racing, you know. Well, exactly, as you say. Now, the thing is, you, as you come out of the fourth turn, you size up exactly what's happening there in front of you. Uh, are you, in fact, deciding what you're going to do, or is it just pure instinct? I was just looking for a nice hole, and uh, the whole track was black, and I was just hoping someone wasn't right there, and I was just trying to use the middle of the track. <laughs> Timmy, the last time you were in victory lane, of course, was for the big 10,000 to win Mr. Super Modified uh, contest last uh, August, or July, rather. Uh, and you've been struggling, I wouldn't exactly say struggling, but you haven't made it back into victory lane since. What do you think's been holding you up? Well, I think a lot of it's bad luck. Uh, we, you know, the last three weeks of last year were... They were tough, we, you know, we were in a lot of accidents, and over the winter, we worked on the car all winter, and I got to thank the whole crew. Boy, they do a terrific job, and just the confidence in the crew this year, Everybody work, everybody's working together real good, and uh, it's paying off, I can already see it, you know, the car's, the car's perfect, they're giving me a great race car. And I got to, I got to think, all I, this is the first year I've had, a, I got a ton of sponsors, I think, I want to thank all of them. Okay. My main sponsor, Burger King, uh, I'm, I, I can't remember all of them right now, but thank you all. I appreciate their help. Okay, and they know who they are, and that's uh, it really, really what counts. The big, uh, the big change from last week, though, to this week. Last week you were competitive, as you say. This week you're here. What do you think the difference was? Well, la last week uh, was a long race, and I was really holding back a little bit, and I shouldn't have. You really can't hold back in these in this class because there's too much, too much good competition to be holding back and. Uh, you just got to drive aggressive every lap, every lap. You feel good about your driving. I tell you, you dominated tonight. You won decisively. Uh, do you think you're going to be able to co be con this consistent for the rest of the season? Well, I'm looking real, uh, I'm looking real forward to doing good in the points this year, and uh, we'll be up there. I'm going to try. Real okay, hard. well, a great victory tonight. A wonderful drive, Timmy Guru. Welcome to Victory Lane in 1998 at the Oswego Speedway. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. Okay, a big hand for Timmy Guru.